The National Party came into power in 1948 and continued its white supremacist rule of South Africa well into the 90s. As their dominance increased, so did the segregation and limitations for people of color. The Group Areas Act was harshly implemented, legally limiting where different racial groups could own homes, work and reside. With this came a gross amount of displacement across South Africa. My grandmother, Salma Mohammed, is no stranger to the pain inflicted on black people at the hands of apartheid. The story I'm about to tell you, my grandmother told me. This story is just a glimpse into what life was really like in South Africa during the 1950s. Unfortunately, we don't have any photos or videos of my grandmother when she was younger because all was lost the day they took her father's farm. For this reason, I've had to use archive footage to illustrate the story. Her father was a hard-working businessman from India, and he fell in love with a strong, outspoken vendor woman. Growing up, my grandmother's life was comfortable. They had everything that they needed to be happy. She was very fond of her father and always speaks highly of him. He had a farm in Mashishani, Petersburg, and a small shop to complement it. The story begins in the year 1953. We experience a very, very sad uh, setup. When the uh, uh, Afrikaners, purposely Afrikaners, walked in the farm, right? There are about five of them, it was a bookkeeper, and the three others were part of them. The sad part of it, I remember I was standing behind my father, because I was very fond of my father, and these people came, right? They asked him, Are you Jumbo? She says, My name is Omar Muhammad. Jumbo is my nickname. So they said, okay. Give us the papers and the keys for your farm and your shop. So then I looked at my father, father looked at him, I can't give you my shop key. There must be a reason why you ask for my shop key. We have been sent to come and close your shop. And he refused to give them the key. And the other two African kind of well, listen. They beat him. Let me pass through this night. And my poor mother couldn't say a word because it was white people. They didn't even give him a chance even to explain himself. But just by asking his papers, okay, you close the shop, give, give my, my shop's papers, they wouldn't. And they dragged him, they dragged him to, uh, to the car. And that was the end. Then we all stood because the shop was closed. There's no, there was no place to go. So my mother ran across and called the neighbors. We all jumped at the, uh, the fence. So they ask a baby, my mother's nickname's name was Baby. Now where are, where are you, have you got people around you that you know? My mother said no. The story ended with them being left with nothing. I believe that this was the onset of all the struggles that my grandmother would face throughout apartheid. Till this day, my grandmother and her siblings are fighting for my great-grandfather's farm back. Life was tough for her, but since I've known her, she's never worn her troubles on her shoulders. She always manages to put a smile on my face. And because of her hard work, strength and determination, I am able to dream bigger. My grandmother is an inspiration to me because despite all the trials and tribulations she faced in her life, she kept going.